administration. How big of a sign advertising Dunkin' Donuts is That's there? That's a good question. I'm not sure how big that is. I mean, uh, whatever. Is it larger? Is it smaller than this one? Uh, Must be. Huh? I'm not sure. Again, whatever size it's there right now is a, is a size that we're looking at. Oh, okay. Well okay. It's the same size. It's 32 square feet. And there's also measurements there too. 24. It could be 64 square feet, right? That's correct. Yeah. And they got 24 and roughly They will not be bigger 14. than what's there right now. It can't so be. They're, they're well under the 64 for the building. <coughs> okay. What size is that this, is four, this is 24 and that's 14. So 38, mm -hmm. 40, 40 a little bit. Probably just about 40. Yeah. Maybe not even that. So they're good. And you have a, a current lease with the owner? Yes. And the one thing that I didn't mention the first planning board meeting I was here, but it was uh, brought up to the Historical Commission and they were okay with it, was this right here uh, is the uh, speaker post that for the drive through menu board. It would actually go in front of it. And this is pretty much what it would look like. The customer would drive up. Uh, that's the speaker right there. Um, and uh, it also says here the clearance just to make sure that nobody hits the uh, drive through um, You're going to guarantee that? Awning. I'm not going <laughs> to guarantee it, but when they do hit it, it's actually on a spring that it'll actually do oh, it some, uh, it'll do it's like oh, a siren true. type thing to say, you know, yeah, don't hit us, please. Yeah. And then also, because uh, my, my concern to them was, uh, they did ask if I was going to add any new lighting. The only new lighting is, again, it's uh, right underneath uh, here, uh, there's four LED lights. Uh, shooting down, and they were okay with that because it's shooting down. Again. Right. So, and then you got a where are these where are these lights are actually going to be on, on this post? It's right uh, on this post, yeah, aiming down at the vehicle. So that post is this wide. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Again, it's it, do, it serves for multi-purposes. Again, for the lighting, and also when it does rain, when you're at the uh, speaker. Oh, so this is the menu board right anymore. underneath it. No, the the menu board will be right over here. Oh, okay. This, this is oh, the, that's just this the speaker, speaker okay. post, yeah. Okay. Speaker post, and then again, it's like three things in one. Want to look at it? I so I changed. I know you asked for the uh, okay, measurement that's, that's for the, the board, yeah. okay. That's the menu board, yeah. And they were okay with me moving the. Um, the drive through uh, mm -hmm. canopy that's there right now, move it over as well, too. They're okay with that as well. The roof, the brick facade, everything stays the same. Stays same exactly the same, yes. Yeah. So, very, pretty much what you're looking at, I'm looking, uh, the owner uh, of the building uh, is going to be changing the um, the uh, roof on it. So it's same, it'll be the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at replacing the windows. It's going to look exactly the same thing, just, um, just newer. Are you um, moving the location of anything, windows? No, 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 no. The windows stay exactly the same. If uh, the side of the drive-through, there is a small window that's there right now. It's got an AC unit, that right there. That's an, that's existing there right now. Uh, I'm looking at that capping that. Uh, so I'm looking at putting brick, brick over there. Okay, but you you actually are putting in a, a new window. You're, 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 moving, move, you're moving the no, drive. No, no, I'm just moving this, uh, moving it over here. So I'm moving this whole thing w with the window right yeah, here. Yeah, that's, that's okay. just you are, you are moving the drive up over to here. Yes, yes, that's yes. correct. Yeah, but this so is I'm just not adding an additional though. So this will this will become a solid wall. That's correct. Okay, there it is. I'm sorry, there it is. Okay. And there is the new. Uh, so that's that. That's where you got that little window and that. Yeah, this is right the this is existing. Right. That's what a little that's the AC unit is. Yep. And that's going to be locked up, okay. and then the, this is going down. Okay, yeah, that's what he yeah, said the, last time. Yeah. Yep. The existing AC unit that's there right now is uh, it's not working, so we're going to replace the whole thing. And right now, I think there's one AC unit condenser that's up front, another one in the back of the unit, so we're going to have everything in the back, so it's not in the front. Um. <coughs> Here's the letters. Somewhere from the Historical Commission is the, uh, the approval. There. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <coughs> did you make the change anything? They did not. No, the only concern they had was the pylon sign to see if I'd be able to uh, not have it interior elim um, eliminated. Uh, I did take it back to Duncan like they asked, and um, Duncan's uh, did prefer just to leave it the way it was. 
That was the only change. Uh, well, wait, I'm sorry, really the only concern they had. But everything Are these other lines? lines? Okay. It could be yours if you'd like to. Also, Mr. Dwyer will tell you what he needs. So, uh, what I would like if, do you have this electronically? I do, yeah. You did say to get a PDF. Like yeah, email it to the planning at hadleyma.org. And what I'll do is I'll attach it to the letter. Okay. And um, I'll just need you to fill in address there. But let me make the motion. So I'll make a motion to waive uh, site plan approval for the uh, move of Dunkin' Donuts uh, into the Donut Man site based upon a determination this proposed work constitutes no external enlargement of the existing floor area. Uh, the building sign uh, will be externally illuminated. The pylon sign will match the existing size and uh, the drive up window will be moved. That's the motion. Second. A motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. So Good luck. If you would just you much, fill in contact information okay. there. You, you, you are giving people free samples when you open up? We will. Yeah. Or, 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 yeah. We like you can, what is, what are the, what is the okay. ethics okay. And this is your requirement yes. so okay. we can yeah. give yourself the 50 Mr. Security. <laughs> Mine is a quick suit. This is the marina additional building for Smith College yep. that we brought in about a year and a half ago. And uh, the instructions are to add your decision onto the plans. So we need the. Oh, this is just the seat safe for the final plan then? Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, this is the one that's the addition he put on last year. Well, he, no, no, this yep. hasn't yeah. gone to construction yet. Oh, oh, hasn't gone into the, oh, oh, that's right. This is the new building over yes. down here. This that's right. I'm sorry. It's going to go to construction within a month or so. Okay. So, if you have the special pen, or I have one. What, what are you doing here? You're knocking this whole exist building out? Yes. And this is the footprint, footprint, right? This is the footprint of the new building. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's the one that is five. Are, are you keeping anything in what he did? The front portion. Uh -huh. That's, you know, that's a major addition. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. You acted on this in, uh, I'd say about a year ago. Yeah, uh, about a year, almost a year and a half. Okay. Uh, 2015. Uh, no, that's just administrative. It's, it's just following on the condition of the uh, site plan approval. And if you sign this one, Jim, you can keep this one for your records. And then I'm going to turn that back to you. Barry Roberts. Thank you. Um, I'm here to speak to you about E Street comments, uh, the 55 and over project that I'm doing off E Street. I think you're all aware of that. <coughs> when we came to the planning board originally to get the approval of that, uh, I made a mistake, I believe, in not asking you for a waiver of the setback on this mm -hmm. southerly boundary. I asked you for a waiver of the setback requirement on the northerly boundary. And we're finding as we put the project, it's symmetrical. And we're bumping up against, I can show you uh, here, that with the commons in the center, the buildings are lined up basically the same. And with a 40 foot setback here, we're bumping right up against uh, trying to site the building. So I would like to ask you to consider a waiver on this south side, the same as you did on the on the north side. How much is that? What's that? Uh, How much was that? 13. Thir 13 foot set the rear, rear yard. Yeah. Side yard. Hmm? Side, side yard. Side yard. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking at the property in relation to 
Okay, East but, but it's the rear of those buildings. Correct, correct. 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 Along the no, this bike trail. Is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is East Street. Okay. Correct. This, is East Street. this is stands right over here, well, approximately. Right. This is, whose property Plus is this? Right? Yeah. Plus is your neighbor. Mm -hmm. to, to, the, to the south. Yeah. Okay. So, as we know, this was all, um, you know, tree because of the bike path. So, uh, it's all, I don't know if I need your approval to do this, but within this setback area, I would like to create a berm that I can landscape because to give some privacy to here and to here. So, I don't know if I need your approval to do that, but I would like to show you what I intend to do. one. So I had John Toon just draw the idea of what we do for a berm. We just, on the back side, the, the uh, neighbor side, we mow that, keep that mowed. And on this side near the houses, we put some shrubbery and stuff to try to create a separation between ourselves and the neighbors. <coughs> so you want to go down from 15 feet to... Yeah, so I think at the time of we were the permitting, it was under the previous zoning bylaw before last fall town meeting, which modified, I think it's 27.6.5.2, which had like, I think a 50 foot, 75 foot front yard and maybe 50 foot side yard. So the original approval was a waiver down to 40 feet here and to 13 feet here. You subsequently okay. changed your zoning bylaw, I believe, to relate back to 4.2, the dimensional table, which is the 15 foot side yard. So I guess essentially what we'd be asking for is. I don't think we met, I don't think we changed this part though, did we? We did not change the rear yard at the last time <coughs> meeting, no. Okay. If that is rear yard, um, then we would be requesting a waiver down to 13 feet. So what we did at the town meeting was to actually correct an error in the, the tables of setback, okay. but this has its own internal setback requirement, okay. so I don't think we changed this. Okay. So I guess then we would be asking <laughs> for a waiver from those setbacks down to 13 feet. So we're going from 40 feet to 13 feet? Does it have to be that much? Well, I mean, I mean, I, I know that's what you're requesting. I'm just, I'm just wondering, I mean, I'm just asking a question. Yeah. Because the bike path is on one side, but it wasn't a big deal. The bike yeah. path is here, right? Here. Yeah, on that side. Right. Farmland and then, you know, Auto Express, the back of it, I forget. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not worried about Auto Express. I'm not worried about that. It's the one home up here that I'm more. Well, these are already wooded. set. This is all wooded. That's why I don't start to burn till the, that's this house. This is all uh, our providing the fifth person at time. Well, aren't these houses already here? I put these houses up now. This one? Not this one. Not this one. This one, this one, and I'm working on this one. So these so are already set back. I set this, right. At 40 feet. And that's when I found out I had, you know, the real problem. Okay, so let me just, I just want to make sure we understand. This house, this one's not here. That's Correct. not here. This is, this is, right. this. Well, the this doesn't comply anyways because it, you allowed me to set it on the existing footprint of the house we tore down. Right, okay. These two. Right. So they don't comply, right? This one isn't here. Right. This one is. This one is. Correct. And this one. This one is. Yep. It, like this fellow here requested a sunroom right here. Yep. You can't do it, you know, because I'm two foot off. How far, what is this distance about? Uh, 50 feet, one inch is 50. 50 foot. There's 50. Okay, one inch is 50. So from the, this is the road, right? Is so that the, the property, property line? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So this house is back 300 and 320 feet, 310 feet, more or less. And this house here is right about here, right? I would say here. Right about here. Across from the Okay. Yes, to push the house. Okay. Yeah. I would. This is all 
as you know, scrubbed right. already. Right, I understand. So I would, rec my, this is my request, we, we can, this, this is negotiable, obviously. Sure. Put this house in line with. Oh, I don't have any problem with that at all. And then this house is set back far that you could give the general, the, 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 the person, I would think, their sunroom, and the rest of these set back 13 feet. I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. I would need this one to be. Perfect. I know, it's, that's what I mean. I said, this one, this one could be set that, back. That would be perfect. We could right, so these, these first, I'm going to call, I'm going to call the first four. Right. Set back the 40 feet, and all the rest can be 13. Those are right. Okay. These three are already four are, and I'm happy to set that one. And yeah, then these are all limited, right? right. No, this so the, the heat of this one. This one he wants to add a sunroom, which will bring it back probably within 13 feet. That's what I'm saying because I'm sorry that this house is over here. It's not going to be really impacting that property right. partly. Okay, I'm good with that. So what's the number? 13. 13 feet. 13 feet. Are these numbered? The house numbers. Yeah, this is, these are um, odd side of the street, one, three, five, seven, nine. So one, three, five, seven, set back 40 feet, and the rest, seven through whatever, 13 feet. Thank you. All the, the rest of the proposed housing throughout um, the project. On the south side. On the south side. Right. Can go up to 13 feet. From the property. Is that what you want? Yes, yes. with the berm, with the berm, with the, with the landscape berm. Yeah. This is one of the <coughs> situations where we have the ability to waive the regulations of setback incorporated into the bylaws. So we do have some. I was just going to ask that. I was going to just yeah. ask that question. And the Thank you. Board and then Thank fact you. There's a typographical error. We'll blame the Pioneer Valley for that. But the <laughs> the planning board. Way wave, may wave any or all dimensional requirements when the judgment of in the judgment of the board. Just for your information also, Barry, we're working on hopefully this fall town meeting trying to bring something forward about this uh, inclusionary. inclusionary zoning so that to put the money into a fund and trying to take the response because we realize what a disaster this is causing and that wasn't the intention. We had no idea what this entailed. So the TDR goes into a fund, we'd like to do something where you could simply put something to a fund, move on, and then you are, okay, you're, you, you're all set, okay? That, that would be great. How uh, is it possible to waive condition, what is it, Tom? Uh, 7D. I mean, I'm perfectly happy to do this. I, I understand that. And <coughs> seven D's got me locked in here. Right. Um, so how do we resolve that? Well, you're not ready for any CLs, are you yet? Till July, end of July. Okay. Okay. We're not quite ready to say we're going to be ready for this fall. We're trying. We're going to try for it. Okay. So why don't you come back to see us maybe like beginning of <coughs> July, months from now, Perfect. and see where we stand. And hopefully we'll have mid, something mid July. Mid, Ju mid oh, July. Sorry. Oh, that's right. Fourth of July. Fourth of July. So yeah. we won't be here. Mid July. Okay. And we'll hopefully at least have a plan to be going forward for the town meeting. Okay. And because as part of the original TD, I mean the original inclusionary zoning, there was a there was a provision for the funding, and we simply took that out. We have all the wording. We just need to get the fine details for the actual funding itself. And once that's done. We should really be, you'll be a much happier person. Yeah, yeah it'll make it a lot easier. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That's okay. reasonable and we can work with that. Okay. I just wanted to mention that I went to the Memorial Day parade with my wife and Mr. Roberts was a participant in that parade and I think as you become a participating in okay. town affairs like that. Well, that's well, that's, well, that's, that's, that's very impressive. What did he do? That's I impressive. I walked and somebody else drove my horse. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. You weren't driving your own team? No. Oh, I was okay. Beside him. Thank you. Okay. Okay, good. Mr. Roberts. Mark Darnold. Yep. And we'd like you to make official submission tonight. Uh, we had previously shown <coughs> a little amphitheater area that has been removed. The parking lot has been slightly decreased. 
So it's the same project that we informally presented to you before. We'd just like to schedule a hearing. If it's possible. Uh, I'm not sure that's possible. Oof. Here's some old things we don't want to add in the briefcase. We had a letter from, I believe, it was the Park Commissioner or somebody saying that they had not agreed to give up Zatirica Park. No, that's not what, I, I don't think that's what it meant. What it meant was, I think it was for the ZBA, they were saying the Zatirica Park has not been discontinued. It is an active park and therefore they don't need ZBA approval for the expansion. Okay. Which I think the ZBA agreed with. Okay, that's what that was? I think so. I'm just a messenger. I'm, I'm here for another reason. They knew they were coming to submit the plan, so I'm brought Well, you're message. here for another reason, but it's the same project, right? I have, I have another project I want to talk to you tonight, too, but. Well, okay. which one do you want to talk about? The this other one right now. This one right well, we, we, we can schedule this. And, and the, the problems come up, the problems come up. Okay. So. I'll make a motion to waive the filing fee. Okay. Other than the newspaper bill. Okay. Okay. Hey, did we vote for Billy Roberts setback? We made a motion, but we didn't vote. Oh, that's right. Okay, Good point. Right. Yeah. Yes. We didn't vote for you. No, we, I just heard that. Right. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to reduce the setback to 13 feet from lot 7 to the rear of the Street. property. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Motion passes you unanimously. Yes. Okay. Good, good point, John. Thank you. Okay. So back to the motion to waive the filing fee other than the newspaper advertising for Saturka Park. Good motion. Good motion. Do have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. So we want to schedule that for July 18. July 18, good for everybody? Anybody out? Yep. Oh, that's. Uh, So we're having a public hearing for, oh, you could put two pavilions in there? Is that the way that is? Pavilion here. What's, yep. the, what's the purpose of that? In pavilion here. Where's the second one? Picnic table. Well, one six hundred square feet, one five hundred square feet. What, wasn't that part of thirty that? by forty? That's that's one hundred and twenty square feet. That's that's twelve hundred. That's twelve hundred. Wasn't that arena? They t they had something. Well, they took the arena. Well, originally, was that we had the, uh, the thing? Of, didn't they have a building there? Yeah, that, that was they, taken away. That's a future. Future, future. Picnic tables, picnic tables. Litter receptacle. Picnic table don't qualify. They've only got, I mean, it's like half this building is pavilion pad, 30 by 40. So it's a pad. Okay, that's 1,200. That's 1,100 and... 30. But they act like they put it in there like it's two separate pavilions. So where's the pavilions? Especially when it says future. Can we shoot the messenger? <laughs> <laughs> That's all details. Pavilions must have been That's just the drainage. The, uh, the application must be rewarded. 
there's a pavilion pad there okay. for future things. Okay. All right. Well, so so you it'll come out at the, at the hearing. You get one, get one set of the plans to the town clerk. Correct. And... Um, Show these one more time, Jimmy. Just make a note of it. Yeah. Public hearing 718. So this has to go to the town clerk, but so she has to know the fee's been waived. Yes. Um. Okay. Great. And I have one more question for you. Back on May 2nd, uh, we submitted plans for the nannies at the uh, Haddon Village Farm Shops. Yep. And at the time, I neglected to ask the question as to whether or not the board was going to require peer review. The uh, project, the building, proposed building, meets all setback requirements. Uh, it decreases the area of impervious and drainage have not changed. Where, where is this going to go on? This is Vill Russell Street. Village Barn Shops. Oh, shops. okay, okay. And you manage up at the front, so uh, stormwater is decreased in some area. We meet all the setback requirements, uh, but it's, you know, obviously the board's decision as to whether or not you want peer review, and that's the question I forgot to ask the board. We have shown that we satisfy parking, open space requirements, and decrease in area pavement. So that, that's replacing the original building? There was a building here previously. There were some buildings were torn down. They've already been torn down. Is it, does that equal more or less the same square footage that that was there? Um, I don't know if it, ma it matches exactly. And several buildings have been torn down here, but the whole site plan now, we've reviewed it for open space for the entire parcel. It was at one time, remember, two parcels, but now it's a single parcel, so we looked at the entire um, parcel and make sure that it complies with the zoning for setback requirements. Could we limit it just to the drainage then? The, uh, again, the drainage aspect of it, the <coughs> drainage calculation, basically it's a paved site, and when we're through the project, the amount of pavement is less after the manage goes in and some minor alteration of parking than it was now, so we're really doing drainage calculations because we decreased the amount of runoff coming from the site. How are you decreasing the runoff? Are you tearing up asphalt? Yes. Replacing some of the asphalt with grass items. It's, uh, it's close, but it is a slight decrease. And uh, side note, it is going to the, the uh, Conservation Commission as well because we are within the floodplain, so they are getting a notice of intent application as well. Do you, do you have the before and after documented on the plans and everything? Uh, yes, it's, it's the impervious areas shown before and after. Will the conservation have a peer review, do you know? Uh, I don't know regarding this project. They occasionally do. Yeah. The only aspect I think this regards to the Conservation Commission is compensatory flood storage um, because of the you know, working in the floodplain. Are you building up the elevation at all? Or the elevation, the footprint of the building will be slightly above uh, the 100-year flood elevation, and we sort of compensate it for by putting a slight depression uh, up to meet nine to make up the balance. Well, but I mean, there person. was an existing building then that they removed, right? Pardon? There was an existing building that they knocked down there, right? Yes, there was. But we've gone through all the calculations to show the pre and post from a flood, flood storage perspective, and that will be reviewed by the conservation. So that was the structure that was removed from. That was a long. Looks building like they kept the part of it. Yeah. They kept part of it there. And that's on the Wesley border, right? Correct. Yeah. And the proposed buildings come here. Yeah. And again, when the original design for the original um, hotel and everything was designed, the intention base associated was based on this 
site plan. So this was the original drainage calculation was accommodated to drainage for the project to drain posts. And then also we would analyze that versus that to make sure that we're not impacting the drainage on that portion. Again, it's a, if the board wants to review, we're fine with that. Well, this is the yeah. second request we've had in a, in a couple of meetings regarding waiving the peer review, and we were asking about the cost of the last one, and is it a significant amount uh, dollar-wise? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's an extensive um, dollar amount. It's just whether or not the board wants to have it. It's the time frame aspect. Yeah, we're, we don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. It's, it was my I, 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 You know, if it's ten thousand dollars, it's one thing. If it's yeah. three or four hundred dollars, it's another thing. For and yeah, it's, it's, it's close to fifteen hundred, <coughs> I believe, for like a minimum. Um, Engineering for me was between three and five thousand dollars. That's if it's a more extensive. Right. I, I would think well, just to I don't I don't think the dollar cost should have anything to do with it either you want it or you don't want it I, I, okay? I, I would think <laughs> just to review everything else seems good I agree with I think just to cover ourselves we should do the drainage only okay but the drainage still has to comply with the MS4 law isn't it or is that existing doesn't have to it was existing, we're, we're not changing or detrimentally impact, impacting the drainage. I mean, we're, we're told mm -hmm. we tend to have. I, 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 would like, I would just like to see something on the drainage because that's the one thing. Everything else we can kind of agree. You know, you go less parking, you comply with two for one and everything. The numbers can, can work. And, and I don't disagree that the drain is probably fine. But I think just to cover ourselves, I'd like to see a, a, a review of just the drainage. Yeah, you know, I, I look at this, it's not greater than what was there, it's less. That's correct. So, but, you know, I, don't, I don't see why they should do it. This, this part of town is starting to be developed more and more, and I think uh, we've got to start looking a little closer at it. Yeah. But it's less of a building. Like I understand. So you know, that, that's yep. my two cents. I think just the drainage would be good. Or the board, the rest of them, John says he doesn't think with the need at all. Mike, um, I think we need it just for the drainage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for the drainage. Just for the okay. drainage. Okay. okay. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. Uh, tap room is already on the agenda. It is seven thirty-four. Mister Larry. We'll cover you and then we'll go on with the public hearings so we don't have to drag you out to the end. If you want to hang around, you may. Oh. <laughs> Obviously. You're yeah. really here for the. Couple of things. We received zero comments. So, therefore, by default, we're good. We're good. Okay, we'll go with that. And then I think we talked last year about you wanted to vote and formally adopt it or accept it. Correct. And that is on the agenda. Correct. So I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, master plan update. Does it have a final, does the final date on it? Does uh, I will use today's date. Okay. Okay. Uh, master plan update as of 6-6-17. That's the motion. Do you have a second? Second. Any other discussion? Yeah, no. I certainly would like to see some more talk on solar and accessory apartments. Well, I think that can be done. It doesn't have to be part of a master plan. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a zoning thing. Okay. So that's nothing to that, that can actually That can actually be a, a yeah. to do part, part of yeah. the, it's to part be of investigated. The yeah. Do that as part of the work program for right. this coming year. I mean, that, that's right. Yes, that was a good plan. Okay. Motion and, se motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we'll take that to the printer. I talked to DHC today in Boston, and they will accept the digital version of it. They don't want a hard copy. Uh, so I'll use the arrangements to get that. They're putting the drop box and pick out as well. So that's great. Um, second thing was the FY18 PPA contract. Right. I emailed you a digital version of that. So. And that does have the scope for next year. Uh. This year contract? Yes. Are you asking for more money? Uh, nope. No. 
No. Yeah, oh. no. <laughs> the one I've got says draft on it. Wait a minute. Yeah, I emailed you another version. Oh darn. Yesterday, but it's, it's the same. It hasn't changed. Okay, I didn't bring that. I didn't print. I think I printed out the draft version by mistake. That's okay. So, you want a clean copy? Well, you got a clean copy. Well, you need three of them. But yeah. uh, you just need a plan to see the, the chairman's signature. Yeah. I, I will entertain a motion to have the chairman sign the three copies of the fiscal year 2018 planning assistance with PVC. I'll make a motion to authorize the chairman to sign. I'll second that. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. So I'll sign these, get it by the town accountant, and then we'll give it back to you. Yeah, that sounds great. And we may be the first How many a long time that we made it. We just <laughs> missed. We just missed last year. You go to way easy this time. How many hours do you think you dedicate to Hadley? It's got to be a lot. Oh, yeah, it's over 100. Yeah, so you're, yeah. Don't you're, be you're, you're cheap. Back you're cheap. i got to tell well, you, you're cheap. It, it a, you're it, cheap. It, it's all the deal. We had a conversation, and uh, the doctor and I talked about it, and it is a... Uh, it's a good investment yeah. in terms of hiring a, uh, your own in-house uh, alternative. Okay, so this would be a good time since we have the, um, <coughs> the work program. John, you wanted to add two things to the work program? Right. Solar and accessory parts. Okay, what, part, what aspect of solar? Location or? Locations. Thing about screens. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the takeover of agricultural land. Okay. So, Larry, will you just make a note that that, yep. just add that to the scope of work? Yeah, so it, that, that's very timely because we're doing a lot of green community stuff with the office. And uh, we're doing a lot of new bylaws. In fact, we. Uh, we're working on a 11 acre solar farm in Southampton where they're cutting down 11 acres of forest, which not going well, I would think, by some people. Yeah. Well, this is, question. Well, this is the delicate balance between yeah. the rights of the individual property yeah. owner and the rights of the community. Yeah. I mean, if it was your land yeah. and that woods was doing nothing and you could get some income yeah. from a well, this is on a very large farm, yeah. and it's a, tough it is, there's a lot of acreage has been cleared in his graves for pasture land, and then there's this like about 15 acres of forest at the far end of it. Yep. And rather than put it on 10 acres of the pasture land, they're taking down the forest and putting it there. I don't care what we do; we're not going to satisfy everyone. You know. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. Like yeah. No yeah. Qu 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 question on a separate topic. When we talked before about the inclusionary zoning, do you know of any towns that have a fund set up like we have for our TDR fund? Uh, like a trust? Yeah. 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 You do? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if there are any in this area that do. Well, you don't. And it's been a hot topic in the eastern part of the state. Our inclusionary zoning bylaw originally had a housing trust fund component, right. which got stripped out at town meeting because of objections from the finance right. committee. Can you, s I went looking for the original I text. The original. You do? I have the original okay. text. I believe home. this is one of your master plan uh, goals or topics. Right, so, so we, could we you know. find something for the Easter, could you find something yeah. on the funding and get it to us? Because like we talked to Mr. Baird, we would, Mr. Roberts, we'd like to do something because there's some stuff coming up besides his that's going to hit this, we got some subdivisions that are gonna be hit this inclusionary zoning yeah. threshold. And we're finding out, just so we talk about, and we talked about it with you, that this is yeah. way more involved than we thought, and that was not our intention. It, it, it really is, and you know, what a lot of towns are finding is the little payment thing has become a problem. Uh, the, the trust aspect of it has gotten a lot of, a lot of discussion. And then the, uh, the infamous having your housing authority monitor everything <laughs> has sort of hit a brick wall. Uh, but then, and because I know we had that issue right. with, the, with Mr. Roberts. Um, and I think just what every town has that clause in there. Yeah, there's there's a lot of so I, and I've actually been talking to the state about that. If, you know, that's probably a good thing to take out of their model. Um, and, uh, come up. And, and so essentially, I think the alternative is, uh, you know, there are entities out there that you can hire to do the monitoring. If that's what you have to do, that's what you have. And, and, and if we got a fund in the, I mean, something that can be administered 
by a, I don't want to say one-stop shopping, but to have 10 different entities, just I'm, I'm stretching it obviously, trying to enforce this across could be a, yeah. to me looks like a record for disaster. Yeah, no, I, I agree. How is, so. is, is the local um, housing authority that you know of for rejecting to do this? Well, yours was the first one that's really come out and, and said that, but none of, none of the other ones have been It's the state that's sort of now recommending they not get involved in these private developments. So somebody's going to do it. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, there are agencies out there. Right. They, they can do that. I know that there's, at least we call it half house wayfinders, but down in Springfield, I think there's something, uh, a, uh, an, a, an agency in Amherst uh, that can do it. It's just they're going to have to pay for it. I think the point Larry made earlier was that one it's Executive Office of Housing and Community Development. One branch of the state agency sets out these <coughs> suggested zoning bylaws that says the housing authority should supervise it. Another branch of the same agency is telling the housing authorities they that they shouldn't do it. Right. And it's funny because after uh, uh, the, the meeting I was at when I first learned about this from, from Mr. Roberts, I was at a meeting with uh, Bill Rail from the uh, from the bylaw side of it. And I mentioned it to him that, you know, this is this issue that's popped up. And his, he kind of got a, you know, oh, OS moment uh, that, you know, holy cow, yeah, you know, and, and everybody in the state has pretty much done it like this. So it's an issue they're going to have to address. Larry, getting back to solar for a second, how are the wealthier communities in Eastern Mass handling it? Say Wellesley, Newton, Beverly. Uh, are they are solar fields being put in these communities, or are, are they getting or are yes. they getting around it somehow? I'm assuming yes, because you really can't prohibit them. Yeah, but you just regulate them. I'd like to just see what they're doing. Well, I can give you that. I'm yeah, suspecting but, but, something like Wellesley. You don't have any 10-acre parcels that are oh, available. Oh, you know, they could probably well, Wellesley Univ Wellesley College. You could put it right in the middle of that. You know, they could do anything. That's, that's, that's my that's my question though. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is the burden falling unreasonably on Western Mass, especially I, communities that have a lot of I, farmland? I spent a year and a half in Spencer uh, over the last two years. Oh. And in that year and a half, I think there were seven that were in, including one that was like 75 acres. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, they, and they're enormous. I mean, they are all two megawatt well, so facilities or, or Spencer's uh, a little different from Wellesley or Newton or, it is, or Beverly. I mean, it's, it's, that's central mass. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. That's real central I'd say that's probably more poverty there than yeah. out here. I, I'm not sure so much eastern mass, western mass. Yeah. It may be a wealthy community. Just less curious. Just curious. Well, we can. I can check into that. Yeah. Okay. How do those solar fields do on during the weeks where you don't have any sunlight? Any yeah. idea? They generate some. Yeah, they still, they they still generate, generate a little bit. It's only they generate the, some, you know, yeah. the darkness of night. Yeah. And don't grab those wires. Yeah. <laughs> as long as the sun's shining, they're pumping it out. What else have you got, Larry? That's it? Uh, and the definitions, um, I, I sent them to Tim at following the last meeting. Um, he was very happy, uh, very happy and grateful that the board was tackling this. He had a couple of comments. He's going to look them over. We're going to get together and sit down and go over this. Okay. But uh, he was, uh, this is going to help them a lot. And that's all. Good. Very good. Thank you very much. See you I in a month. Not, I will not stay. Nope, you will not see, see you. That's right. See you in two months. Fourth of July is our next. Yes. Yep. Unless you want to come here. No, but thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> good night. All right. Um, we'll go on with some of the quicker ones here. Let's see. Public hearing, tap room. Where is it? Yes. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, June 6, 2017, beginning at 7.15 in the Hadley Senior Center Meeting Room. <coughs> Excuse me. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application of a tap room for special permit establishment focused on primarily serving liquor at the existing Mill Valley Condominium, Mill Valley Commons building at the intersection of Mus Russell and Mill Valley Road. Application and plan may be viewed in a town clerk's office during normal business hours published twice in the Gazette, May 23 and 30. And what do you want to do? I'd like to have a special permit uh, granted so uh, I can move forward with the liquor license and open a tap room at that location. How, much, how many square feet are you going to be doing? 2,422. 
Oh, pretty good sized room. Yeah. That's about what half the building. No, the building is five. Um, is it drawing here for you? The building is five unit, five units, and it's one of the, um, the middle ones, twenty four, twenty two. We're taking it for one, one of the middle ones. How big was was it again? Two thousand four hundred twenty two. And where are you going to locate this in that complex? It's um, so it's right where room number C. Sorry. So the building, first building here is the dance studio. We are right here. So this one's towards the road? This one's towards the road, yeah. Here's the, the main. Road. Yep, here's nine right here. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be this this one right here. Correct, yes. This is the one they're going to see for this nine. That's this one. Here it is. I guess it's just the layout, the layout there, the emergency plan, uh, as well as the description of that last page here. Just for the audience, when we when we applied for this, we we, we re redid the zoning bylaws in a tabular form or, an ex or a spreadsheet kind of a form, as opposed to the original word listing. We discovered that a liquor establishment that serves only liquor and not food was not permitted at all in a town of Hadley, unless it was a nonprofit club. So we, rather than change the whole value law, we put it, it's now permitted in the business zones, the industrial zones, with a special permit from the planning board. And that's why this is about, because it's, it's really a form of a, I don't want to call it a restaurant, but if they're serving liquor only, that's what this gentleman wants to do. And that's why this is being done. It's not a site plan approval, because the building has already gone through site plan approval. This is a special permit to allow him or this business to serve liquor. Primarily, and you know, whatever minor little snacks he may have, I'm sure will be part of it. Well, when, you, when you say liquor, let me just clarify beer and wine mostly, eventually, probably liquor, but focus largely on the craft brewers, the craft wineries, the okay. farmer brewers locally. Yeah. This, um, um, not a place to be doing shots, uh, you know, and things of that nature. So. This bylaw only allows the use, the authority is the selectman to grant you the permit. Correct. Yeah, that's and correct. That's, you need, a, you need a liquor license. You need a liquor license. Yeah, we're not granting the liquor license. We're only granting the uh, the, the, the the right to to be such a business in this zone. Yes, question? Yes, hi. Um, yeah, I have a, um, first of all, do you have proprietor you're the person who's license? Uh, I'm proprietor of the business, not the building. Not the building. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, of the, of the business that you just tap into. Correct. I'm, I would be your neighbor across the street, um, and I have, I have a problem. Um, first of all, I'm Kathy Salvatore. Um, I live right, right, right across from the entryway into the local the New Valley Commons. And I have a resident in that piece of property, right on the top of the property. Um, and also, Alongside on the other side, there's there's tree houses, also residents. I've seen, uh, I've been here for over 55 years. I've seen lots of changes up and down Route 9, like all you guys have seen um, uh, as I have the age. Um, so we have residential basically going on. And across from the Mill Valley Commons, um, I'm here as a resident. Um, the problems why I'm sort of against you having a tap room there with a liquor license is, uh, first of all, there would be extra traffic being, um, you know, coming and going in and out of that driveway, and um, it would just uh, it would be cars, trucks, and motorcycles because tap rooms. Uh, you know, I used to frequent establishments myself. I have a brother that also loves motorcycles, so. Entering and leaving the pump, pump the premises on um, here in the establishment that you want to That's between 5 p.m. and probably 1 or 2 a.m. Um, as, as a resident area, um, after that, between the 5 and the 2 or, you know, the next day, we sort of like our quiet time. Uh, uh, after a long day's work, I'm a caretaker for my two elderly parents now which is quite draining if you've ever been a caretaker for your folks. Um, and also my, uh, Mary Byron, which, who, who lives across, and, uh, directly uh, across Route 9. She is also a caretaker and a retired nurse. So um, with, with just Route 9 being on 
would it be my right now I'd be dealing with more ins and outs uh, that I would hear from my house. Um, uh, I think that would make it a little bit more dangerous for myself and also for um, uh, the, uh, the point on the top uh, coming coming in and out. People will come off Route 9, if anybody knows how Route 9 can be on a busy weekend or when the students are back or um, um, uh, Secret Bowl time or whatever it might be. Uh, drivers are often frustrated being on Route 9, stuck in the traffic, coming over the Coolidge Bridge into our town. And when they come off of uh, Route 9 and bear to the right on uh, Mill Valley Road, it's a 45 mile per hour area. And people love to get off the of Route 9. Uh, with the new customers entering entering into your into the Mill Valley Commons and leaving but just across my driveway could cause uh, could cause more accidents there. Um, and also there's a there's a couple tel there's a, a telephone pole right across in that driveway. So yikes. Um, right now I just noticed I was coming um, from Mill Valley onto Route 9 and the stop sign there is just pushed over. That gets smashed every now and then trying to get on Route 9. Leaving the Mill Valley Road properties, um, it's a little of an incline going on to Route 9, and so, um, and it's very hard and a dangerous spot to be pulling out, either going down to Northampton or out to Amherst. And I hear a lot of peeling out uh, traffic, so with the additional tr uh, trucks and cars and motorcycles, uh, in my quiet time, I'm gonna hear more and more of that. Um, and just in mid, uh, May, we had a three-car accident there. It was a bump, bump, bump kind of a thing. Um, so this is why I'm sort of concerned about having just more traffic, never mind um, happy people leaving the establishment. Um, I was just drinking. I was concerned about that. Uh, uh, would there be more entertainment? to keep the people happy. So you're talking maybe, I don't know if they call it a jukebox anymore. I even had to look up how you spell J-U. It's a T-E-P-O-X, it's K. It's jukebox, so I don't think they have those anymore. Um, also, I'm concerned about the safety of the two other businesses located on the, on the Mill Valley Commons. The dance studio is way over um, to my side. Then there's, I believe that's A section. B section is empty and it's a small little section. And this gentleman wants to have the C section, the D section, and then the, uh, there's a martial arts center that was just open there. And the martial arts people, um, they they have uh, their their times, their hours, and they do go past five o'clock. Um, with people coming and going, maybe after their hard work day, want to go to the tap room, uh, might create a little bit of a problem with people coming and going from that that. Uh, martial arts place too. Um, the dance place, I believe they, they would have maybe some adults. It's an Irish, I don't know, how did Irish dancing get into it? But I mean, it's a little Irish dancing kind of establishment yeah. that uh, has gone in there. Um, I'd just like the board to consider if your driveway was at the other end of uh, an establishment where you had motorcycles, trucks, more cars going in and out between five and two o'clock. Would you appreciate that? Um, I'm, I'm not saying that that's a never, never kind of situation over there on Mill Valley Commons, but as of right now, I think they could hopefully find a, a different kind of, the proprietor maybe would have some um, consideration and maybe have more appropriate places to learn. <coughs> What are your hours of operation going to be? Uh, during week five to eleven. We're, like I said, we're not like a nightclub or something like that. We close at eleven. We have a higher class um, constituency there. We charge six dollars for a beer. You're not getting down a pitcher of Bud Light in our establishment. Uh, you're getting a glass of wine. You're paying eight to ten dollars for. Uh, it's just not the type of place that there's going to be parties going on until till two in the morning. It's definitely not two in the morning. I'm too old 
close at 2 in the morning. Yeah. Uh, 11 o'clock is, is, a, is a closing hour. What about on the weekend? You said during the week. So weekends will probably open, we'll open somewhere around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but still not open past, or past 11 o'clock. Okay, I, I also feel that um, happy right now we have the coming off the bridge, you have Miss Hero, which is a Spanish Mexican restaurant. You can have libations there. There's um, uh, Alina's, which you should be from Alina's, which is again with food. And there's the Texas Roadhouse that was just um, uh, up past us, where you can have libations with some food. Applebee's Neighborhood Bar and Grill, Chili's across from there, Ginger Gardens down the street. So there's about five different restaurants, and there are restaurants with the, you know, the beer, wine, and whatever else fans would do. Um, and of course, we have hotels now in Hadley, which I was trying to go back years and years ago. It's just Goose Hill Road. It's Goose Hill Hotel, right down from the only hotel I, I could think of, across from Chet Kulikowski's, from where the Valley Conference is, if you remember. Um, can I address a couple, five years ago. A couple more issues? Can I can address? Yes. So it was Thursday at 5 o'clock. There was 20 cars in the parking lot. So um, there's already people there at the establishment. Two businesses there. Somebody's going to move in to those other locations. I don't think they're going to be vacant forever. So there will be cars going in and out. I also have met with, the, with the, police, uh, the, the chief of police and the uh, fire department chief and talked about the parking, the, the travel in and out of the area. And neither one of them seemed concerned about you know, it is a tough corner. I admit that. Uh, it is a tough corner there. I've heard maybe there's going to be a stoplight put there sometime, but I don't know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. um, but even with a stoplight, just, 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 just a second. This gentleman I'm speaking. Sorry. I'm sorry, yes. You need to be recognized to speak again, please. Okay. So, I mean, so, I mean, that's, I, I, I have done my due diligence to talk to the local officials about, um, about the area. Um, someone eventually is going gonna, is gonna to move into those locations. Um, what I, if nothing else, I, I leave here with the feeling that you guys know that it's not a, like I said, it's not a nightclub. It's not just the lights going off in the thing until 2 o'clock in the morning. There may be a gentleman in the corner or, 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 or a female in the corner playing guitar, singing very low at certain times. We don't have a jukebox. Um, we have a, a, we have a stereo in there. That's just, it's just a basic stereo that we can, we can play music off of our phone. In. So, um, you know, I would, I would liken it to um, a place you may go to, like a band and building brewery, small, quaint, um, upper echelon type clientele. Um, we can afford to just spend six or seven dollars for a beer um, in there for, for a couple beers, sampling the different local flavors, and that's basically what that's basically. I understand. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Um. You haven't been recognized. Thank you. Anybody else with questions? Anybody on the board with questions? Yeah, I don't want to address that lady down there. I haven't recognized you when this building was built, complaining about what it could be done. It's zone business. What do you expect this business to do? Just to build a building and leave it empty? I don't. That's why I'm. I, I, I really don't. Um, I understand, you know, business and stuff, but. Um, we're, res we're part of Hadley is, we're still residents there, and I, it's just not me. I have another neighbor right across the street, and that, that's, you know, Butter, and they're restaurant people, and they come in, I see them go at 10 o'clock, and come home at 10 o'clock. And I like to hear my keepers in the spring, and I keep my windows open. I am not one that, you know, when, when it's warm, I, I close my house down. And it's just that... I, I'm really appreciative of the, of the uh, proprietor for leasing or, uh, uh, or getting rent from, from other establishments. And most of the establishments, even if it was an auto zone, is closed by at least 8 o'clock. And I'm just asking for, you know, we are residents. There is, for instance, we have a Megan's uh, Landscaping and another business down on Mill Valley. Between 6 and 7.30, we hear beep, 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 and we hear uh, uh, big, uh, the big plow trucks backing up and stuff. I can't stop business happening and, and happening, and it's, uh, uh, I'm not asking that. It's just that uh, we do like our peace and quiet in certain sections of the town. Um, I would go, you know, there's hasty fence that my cousin leases, 
There's other, other businesses around where we are. Chet Kulikowski has that piece of land. Um, from from uh, you know up, up from me from the Texas Lawn Course, there's a couple of residents there, and um, we're. I understand the town is changing. I've seen a lot of changes in the past 55 years. Um, Lowe's and Home Depot's and all these things. But I, you know, I, I we used to have a brown round. It was in the mall. There's appropriate parking. He's going to bring in some. I mean, there's enough of par uh, hopefully enough of parking in that in that Mill Common, Mill Common, Common, uh, Mill Valley Commons to appropriate to be appropriate for another establishment coming in and the other smaller unit. Is that going to be enough of parking? What's the capacity of 60. 60 people? 60 is the capacity. There's, there's 70 some spots in that in that building. So okay. no, there's about 60. But I, I didn't and finish. I didn't finish talking to you about this. How long you been there? At, at your property. at your place. How long you been there? I've been at least 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. I have no valley property. How many years has that been a business uh, zone? My, my, the property your I property. Had. Your father was Pete? Correct. Yes? He also wanted to sell that for a business, that whole corner. Correct? Correct? I have 4.2 acres there, sir. Yes. But he wanted to, that was his land originally, right? Yes. He wanted to sell that, I think it was Langley Ford or something like that. I could remember way back. That's correct. It. Now, you live in a business district. What do you expect? go back to a residential district that's not going to yeah, happen money. that's not going to happen um judge just just for the record uh that parcel is zoned industrial well business or industrial it is but industrial it's, not, not residential. No. industrial allows for no further uh new residential construction is not allowed in the industrial district right right i just want to point out that there is some historical precedent in town for these types of establishments to be on Route 9. There was a former priest in Hadley, a Catholic priest in the 50s that named Route 9 as it went through Hadley, Highball Highway. highway. So it's not like use is changing at all. Any other comments from anybody? Board, anything? Yeah, is he gonna have a sign Where's your sign going to be? Uh, I believe the landlord has approval for a ladder sign in the front of the building. It's not installed yet, but it'll be one of the five signs on that ladder sign. So um, I assume he already had that approved for you to move when you build the building. Okay. There's no sign, but it'll be on what the building sign is today. It'll be right in that location. I have one more comment. Yes. Um, right now, how many, how many people were in there? How many people? Ten or five. There were there were only like twenty people out there. In right parking now. lot, yeah. Right. Um, it's it's the summer. We have three other co three colleges in the area, and um, <coughs> like I said, there's other establishments where they can eat and drink. So, you know, I I, I can't look at a crystal ball and say this is going to be great and everything's going to be quiet. But um, next door to the Mill, uh, the Mill Valley Commons, there's a rental. And there have been, uh, when students come back, they like to have their, hey, buddy, I'm back. And then, you know, other parties. And they have bused people into that house, to the house right next door to me. Right next door to the Mill Commons uh, place. So now all they have to do is go over and tap into your place and say, hey, we got a place here. To hang out. And at night I had I had people walking down from the party at that house, screaming and yelling at each other and dro dropping the F-bombs waking up at one o'clock in the morning. So I mean those things can happen, but they're not going to happen all the time. And I, you know, uh, but yeah, that kind of stuff can happen. They're going to find out there was happening. And, and, and those things happening have nothing to do with this business. But that's that's a rental. Kind of that that's a rental issue. That if it's a rental issue, and it bothers you, you should be taking that up with the board of selectmen or the or the chief of police, well, because neither this gentleman nor this board has any control over that. I mean, I'm not trying to make light of the issue. Don't take it that way by any stretch. But 
that is an issue, and I agree with you, but and that's not something we can have any control over, and whether or not this gentleman is there probably won't matter. It's really something, I mean, if it, I, I, I can see where it bothers you. I'm not trying to, like I said, I'm trying to make light of it, but that's an issue to take up with the Board of Selectmen because I believe there is a noise bylaw and stuff like that that addresses some of that stuff mm -hmm. that they can't enforce. Mm -hmm. Well, and I could, I could rent out my, my house there and have, you know, it, it, it downsizes it. it um, not downsizing, but it's like the But um, if I were to rent out that house on Mill Valley Road to professional people or to younger families, it's not going to, and the capital is there, and other things are there. Just like, like I said, it's just um, the hours, and possibly the extra noise, and, and the dangerous situation is there between coming off the night and people wanting to take a right into the um, or leaving, it's just going to be a lot more easier. Well, just a personal observation. If you're going to go out and tie one on at night, I don't think this is the place you're going to do it. I really don't. Any other comments? Questions? Motion? Yes, to second. New form? Yeah, but it's small. It's because it's not site plan <laughs> approval. Uh. How did you get arcade miles to draw this up to you? If you buy the lumber from them, they'll do it. All right. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a special permit based upon the following findings project is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. The problem project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. Uh, work will be conducted in accordance with this plan set. Uh, approval is for the specific intended use of the premises as the tap room. Any other use is prohibited without further approval, as this is in the aquifer. Um, ours are, uh, this is something you can come back to if you want to, but ours uh, 5 to 11 we uh, weekdays, uh, 2 to 11 weekends. Um, sign design, two be approved in the future. We want to see what it's actually going to look like. Um, you're not putting in any landscaping. The approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, the Sewer Commission, and Water Commissioners. And it's also subject to select board approval of a liquor license. Question on that time bill. That time only pertains, pertains to the business opening, not you know, like cleaning or anything else, they can be before. Opening, open, that's to open hours. Uh, operating uh, hours. Operating hours. Operating is hours. That, is that satisfactory? Yeah, because yeah, we could be cleaning later. Or right. Or yeah. So it doesn't, right. they don't get in trouble if they're in their building cleaning. And I suspect that will be also addressed by the select board in there. Right. Yeah. License. But, well, yeah, and, and it, but it's got to be in conjunction with us. For the tap room, I would put, uh, maybe recommend, as a proprietor of Joe, who's it? E C K E R L E. Eckerly. Eckerly. Um, that if the ownership changes, they'd have to come back to us. Okay. Well, any use has to, doesn't it? Yeah, but I mean, if somebody he could sell it to somebody else and keep it as a tap room. They could completely change the operation of the of this thing. Whereas this way, we'll make it that if it changes ownership, um, they would have to come back to us.
Okay, I'll add, if ownership changes, further review is required. Good. Okay, that's the... Legal mapping. Absolutely. Right. I run, a, I run a facility in South Deerfield with 400 employees. Believe me, I'm nice to all our neighbors right there. Okay. okay, so that's the motion. That's the motion. Second. Motion second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Stick with me or? Um, no, just go to make sure you go to the selectman for the liquor license. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to you. <laughs> Well, all right, um, continuations. Uh, da, 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 da. Which one do you want to take up? Uh, looks like most, well, they're probably about split. Let's go with Evers. Evers. So I'll actually get it, maybe. Uh, how many okay. people do we have for Eversource? Shady Lawn? Nobody. All right. Okay, Eversource. Eversource is next. Continuation for the solar facility at uh, Mill, well, South Maple Street, Mill Valley Road, kind of an intersection there. And Eversource. It's got some splinter, to John. Oh, Moody Bridge, I'm sorry, Moody Bridge in, uh, in Mill Valley, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ingrid Wisdom, she ever saw one to present a letter we got from Mr. Earl. We talked about land, yep. landscaping, okay. just to meet with him and set up a landscape plan on his property. So that's a letter that we prepared and there's an attached landscape plan. You'll see it on the, on the overall okay. site plan as well. You only got one copy of that letter. Um, I have two. Okay, here we go. That makes more sense. Okay. Okay. Um, good evening uh, for the record. Mike Gagnon from Malone and McBroom um, on behalf of Eversource. Uh, basically, uh, since the last time we met, which I believe was on April 17th, there was a request to provide some Are there any uh, more arborvitae that grow in this general area of town naturally? Yes. Is it they're, they're native, yeah, they're native they, to the uh, area? Yeah, we tried to. Um, uh, are any of the fields around there, are there arborvitae growing? I can tell you, if you go to. Pete Cook, do you have any arborvitae on your property? No. It's no. Okay. A couple of trees. Okay. Yep, 
they're called, they're actually the common name is called the green giant arborvitae, and that's specified um, on the plant, in the plant list, which has been updated also. What's the height of them? Um, they vary. Planting at six feet. Yeah, six feet. Six feet? So that kind of uh, summarizes the changes. So to summarize, the total acreage of the total parcel that you own is? 32 acres. 32 or 34? 32. Right here in the front tree, that's the green 32 acres you own, and the solar panels will cover 4.7? Yeah, just under 5. Okay. Is there any uh, future thought of expanding that solar array on that site? We're pretty much confined uh, due to wetland resource areas. Uh, we, we actually, honestly, we had looked at a larger scheme, um, but we're really limited um, by the wetlands. Um, and what about, to, what about to the north? Um, same reason, we can't go any further north because you the can't wetlands. build no solar rays in that no northerly section. No, that's all wetlands. But could, could you buy any other land from a farmer and put a solar array in, a few, in the future? Probably, right? Could this be the beginning of something bigger? The abutting pieces are being put into APR. They can take it out of APR, though, can't they? No, not easily. No. Yeah, really? The legislation. Well, they, they, they put the solar law in so they can do anything they want. They put the what? Solar, the solar law in so they can do everything they want. Oh, well, it's a two thirds or three quarters yeah. vote of the legislature. Well, and you, to you, also, from you also need what? town meeting oh. approval. To remove from uh, APR. Okay. okay. And you have to pay back what you got. Mm -hmm. I understand that. that Every source has the money. <coughs> I don't, I don't think it's that way. That's a lot. That I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Earl, make sure you agree with this. This is what you've agreed to. I understand. Yes. Yes, sir. No, so, as I said before, I'm not, you know, I'm opposed to this, of course, it, 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 uh, for all the reasons we've talked about, but uh, because the bylaws really didn't protect this property, you know, we're going to mitigate the, you know, mitigate the issue of just doing it, but, uh, the best we can do. But, but the, le the, le the letter, excuse me, the letter that you signed is basically protecting you from this solar array, correct? What about everybody else? It's, nothing's being accomplished really. And you know, we got a letter here from Mr. Siago. Is anybody gonna read this record, that letter into the record? Or will it be made part of the record? Where is it? Right here. Right here. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm sorry, yeah, that's right. Okay. Any other comments from anybody else in the audience? No, okay. We do have a letter. Um, my name is Fred Siago. I currently live at 111 South Maple Street with my wife and three sons. Letter is in regard to the proposed solar project for the corner of Moody Bridge and South Maple Street. We are strongly opposed to the solar project. We do not object to solar power as we ourselves have installed a solar system on our house. South Maple Street is open farmland with beautiful views of the Holyoke Range. Time and, efforts, time and effort has been put in to label this area as a greenway for migrating birds and most of the land around it has been preserved by the Kestrel Land Trust. A solar farm in this area would go against all the hard work that has already been done to keep the land open and safe for birds and other wildlife. The sol this solar project will also be an eyesore. Just drive to Atkins Farm and see what Hampshire College's solar farm looks like. One of the reasons we chose to build our home in this area was the open space and the beautiful views and this project will devalue not only my home but the land and homes located on South Maple Street. Hadley and Amherst already have numerous large-scale solar installations, many of which are within a mile of the proposed project. 
These installations continue to be built on farmland which goes against Hadley's heritage. Again, we support mm -hmm. renewable energy, but feel the site selection for this project is not appropriate, and we strongly oppose it. Signed, Fred, C Fred and Heather C. Aglo, 111 South Maple Street. Any other comments? I, one comment. I am Peter Cook. I live uh, right across the street. My own property, and my brother also owns property right across from where this existing site is. And our feeling is that these people own this land, and I think they have a right to do what is legally or environmentally acceptable. So I have no problem with this at all. I don't think it's going to depreciate my property at all. And <coughs> I could go back 10 years and I could say, well, it was nice where I live. But then, you know, a couple of houses got built here and a couple more got built there. But, but I didn't say anything. It's just it's their property. They have a right to do what they want with it. So I think, you know, it's kind of, you know, they, they had property on Route 9 that they sold, they put molds on, and they came out and they built their nice houses over our way. No one said nothing about that. So I don't see what they're complaining about. All I got to say. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Entertain a motion, Mr. Dwyer? Okay, so we first have to go through an administrative review. And I think everything has been addressed. It's been sent out for interdepartmental review. We didn't get any comments back from anyone, did we? No. <clears throat> uh, we're within the timeline. We have received the required documents for site plan, um, the specs, contact information, uh, electrical schematic, design documents, elevations, yeah, all the documentation was correct. Um, proof of liability insurance, did we get that in the package? I believe that. That's usually provided by the contractor. The building the, 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 the building okay. Okay, so it's it, the applicant, that's you, yeah. shall be required to provide evidence of liability insurance in an amount and for a duration sufficient to cover loss or damage to persons and property caused by the failure of the system. Um, I'm actually not sure how much uh, damage off site would occur if the system failed. Um, but um, why don't we just, uh, uh, by construction, just uh, provide some evidence of appropriate insurance. You have site control. You don't have to notify the utility. Um, uh, land clearing is not an issue, soil is not an issue, wildlife corridors not an issue, setbacks are not an issue, and parking is not an issue. So that's the administrative review. Um, so let's see, what, we, what do we have? We have the uh, site plan approval. How many, how many permits are we dealing um, with? Here? I believe we have site plan, aquifer. I'm looking for the legal notice. Let's see. Wide scale ground mount solar, site plan approval, erosion and sediment control, four of them, and construction and aquifer. So. Okay. I have one more question. Sure. What's the uh, like the lifespan of, those, of that solar field? I mean, like ten years, twenty years. Twenty-five, like to uh, possibly extend for ten more years. So you know, you're just, these things are going to be similar, like just you know, like model of cement blocks or whatever. No. No, that, no so cement. Twenty years, whenever if you decide you can just yank them right out of there, yep. that field will be right like it is today. Yep. Yep. We have a retirement. A win-win situation. And back to where today. Oh, that's right. We didn't address the pilot program. This has already been, I believe, 
This already has gone through pilot program. No, uh, no. at the town meeting, what was your, you agreed to pay the town in lieu of taxes, payment no. in lieu of taxes? to pay property taxes. They did not request a pilot. Oh, you're going you're gonna to pay pi property taxes on this? We're going to pay property taxes. Not pilot program? Correct. Oh, okay. So what's the difference? Um, usually it's in your So they'll, they'll they'll pay they'll pay the tax based on a value of this pr 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 process of the parcel, but nothing on the sowers themselves. This personal property tax. No. No. They, we'll pay for all the rates, the equipment, all that. Yeah. Yeah. So they're paying real estate tax and personal property tax. Personal property tax on the network of the array. Right. Correct. How much would that be? Uh. And that would be top of ballpark about two million dollars. What is the tax we you pay? Uh, that I don't know. I don't know yeah, the mill rate. We don't. Not sure what your mill rate is. We don't usually provide. Eleven. That. Figure eleven twenty-five a thousand. No, it's higher than that. It's closer to fourteen. Oh, that's right. We had nine overrides. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about that, Joe? No, you didn't get billed yet for that. So it'll be roughly. You're talking two hundred and eighty thousand a year, roughly. Uh, what are you paid now? Is that that's not? I know that land's not a sixty-one a. But what kind of a tax do you pay on it now? Is it, how do they tax you? I mean, this is going to be quite an increase for what you yeah, that, that I do. It's kind of a tax bridge. Yeah. 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 So on yeah. jingle. Just recall that. Every source has a market capitalization. If you had to buy the company today on the stock market of about 19 billion, so this is a drop in the bucket. I know, Mike, but still, it's a lot of jingle. You want to build a bunch of houses out there, and you add to the schools, and you add to this, and what do you got? That's right, Peter. You remember how many houses were proposed there? Three houses. Thirty years. No, no, but 30 years ago on this property, 40 years ago. Well, oh, oh, when when Norin was going to put a subdivision in there. Yeah, when Norin was going to put a subdivision in, I think between the between the left and the right hand side, I think there was 27 homes. But the Wetlands Act changed since that. But we didn't have that back when they were going to put this proposal you in. Got they bought the land. You got to know. I know, but it was different when they bought it. I want a little and history on the on this on this site. Who who actually purchased this site, and what reason did they purchase it for? Asking it, I'm asking you guys. That's historical data. That's, that really that's what? <laughs> that's historical data that re I really don't know. <coughs> the Eversource, Eversource and Northeast Utilities that yeah. evidently didn't buy that the firm. Yeah. From my recon recollection, uh, they originally bought it, they were going to put a substation there. That's what I threw. That's what they I They were going to feed Hampton College. Yeah. Commercial use. But that fell through because Hampshire College got their juice from somewhere else. And my neighbor, who, the son who sold the land, to, well, I guess it was not ever sourced, it was put from ass or whatever. He's been farming it, you know, just hanging it for 50 years. And it's not the best farmland, you know, over our way. It's, right now, the ducks are having a good time. I, I was going to say, you, you can't be good. <laughs> last no year was. There's what? no tractors going out in any fields over there. For last, year was pre, last year was pretty good. You can't drive. Well, it was just the opposite. It. How do you expect them to build the house? Yeah. But, but they were, they were going to do it before, John. I know. The laws have changed. Though. I mean, there's a lot of houses in Hadley that really shouldn't have been built when they're built. That's why we had a stick sewer over there. That's why the laws have changed. Yeah. But anyways, okay. okay. Anyways, uh, okay. All right. I'm going to do a motion to approve the application based upon the following findings. The project satisfies the general purposes of the site plan approval special permit bylaw. The intended uses are not permitted by the terms of are not prohibited by the terms of the bylaw and are permitted thereby. Uh, work in connection with the following plans. Um, what's the revision date on this? Uh, let's see, were there waiver requests here? I don't think there were. Copies of the plans have been distributed as provided in the bylaw. Uh, 
proposal satisfies the um, site plan review criteria to the extent applicable. Uh, pose the following conditions. The uh, design features, uh, including but not limited to landscaping, are considered to be an integral part of the approval. Any deviation from the plans as presented and approved will be considered a violation of the terms of site plan approval. Um, the approval is for the following use only, the solar array. No, uh, is there going to be any signage here? It's just a, a notice of some sort. Uh, okay. No signage other than contact safety. Um, landscaping to be main installed, maintained, and replaced per the plan at the tree caliper specified. No outdoor lighting. Uh, I'll leave in no storage trailer, shipping containers, uh, or any other facility not depicted on the approved site plan. Um, we've been asking for removal security of twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand per megawatt. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, so twenty thousand that would. And that is being invested by the town. In what? The money market? I don't know. You well, can talk I think to we the should treasurer. Probably look into that. Uh, so, um, what is the megawattage on this? Um, I think it's approximately one. Could be. Okay. Looking at panel sizes and doing some work a little bit. Okay, so. It's about hmm? Yeah, 20,000. 20,000 should suffice. Scrap value. Uh, approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission uh, and state agencies with jurisdiction. Uh, any project changes directed by other boards must be approved by the Planning Board. Uh, project will be reviewed for compliance by an independent consultant on behalf of the Planning Board at the expense of the applicant. Uh, Site plan approval will not become effective until the, uh, this decision is incorporated with the, the plan set. That's the site plan approval. In addition, we are doing uh, special permits for the uh, at business use in the aquifer protection and under the solar bylaw. And again, the finding is the project is um, in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. Um, work will be conducted according to the plans. Um, and everything else is pretty much the same in there. And that would be for both uh, the aquifer and for the solar special permits. And the solar special permit in part is based on the uh, administrative review. Finally, uh, a uh, erosion and sediment control permit, which is not a special permit. Um, uh, the provisions of the um, bylaw are applicable to this project. The project is not exempt. Proposed site work is consistent with the uh, uh, bylaw. Proposed site work satisfies the performance standards of the bylaw and the design standards of the bylaw. And that will also be inspected for compliance. So that's the motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes. No, I do vote. I think you jumped the gun a little bit too fast, Mr. Blair. I have other questions on this, and I've talked to neighbors on there. Oh, this is the time to. Uh, I, yeah, this I, I, is, I, I, this I, is the I, time to discuss it. We, I, you I, can't, I, we can't have discussion until the motion's been made. Now yes. we're discussing the motion. Okay. I didn't jump the gun. Right. Okay. Well, you were kind of like hurry up. No, we, we, I asked before. Is there any other dis any other questions? Okay, go ahead. All right. <coughs> I talked to other neighbors. This place, this thing is split kind of 50 percent. 50 percent.
don't want this around this area. And other people in town are sick and tired of these solar arrays going all up and they're afraid what's gonna happen in the future. These things just gonna multiply and destroy our town, destroy everything. I have no problem with a farmer in Eversource or whatever, Western Mass, they're not farmers. They never bought this with the intention to farm this site. They bought it for commercial purpose. That's what they bought it for. You know, farmers are saying, well, you know, you've got your land. Yeah, you got a right to do what your land would, right? But you still don't have a right to destroy a neighborhood or take the scenic views or whatever out of this site. And I'll tell you, I'm not happy with this at all. No. Not at all. I, I, I further <coughs> thought that screening after what happened on the Allards on Mill Valley Road, I am fed up with solar right up to here. And they basically laughed at us. It was like a joke. And it said a screening. A screening for what? For rabbits and woodchucks? An eight inch tree? And it's out of our hands? Well, this is not out of our hands. It's in our hands. And I certainly don't want this thing to happen again. And I, I, I'm really on the edge of just joining him and saying no. And I want to listen to Mike's story. What 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 his no is. Well, I, I think the record will show that I'm not against solar fields, large solar arrays in Halley. For, matter of fact, two weeks ago, I voted in favor of two uh, from, from Mr. Goulet's uh, property in back of Mountain Farms Mall. But again, he was a farmer and he has no other thing that he can do with that property. He's limited. As Mr. Michikoski just said, a corporation made an investment here, not to, not to mow hay, not to graze cows, not to raise pigs, but they made an investment to do something that the corporation wanted them to pursue. And in my opinion, they made a bad investment. That's why I'm voting against it. And they never paid tax on, for a commercial. They got away with, a, with an agricultural site, <coughs> but they took the agricultural site out of this. You know, the, the screening, I may consider this now that they stop their screening there, let them screen that whole site in. Let them put a minimum of eight foot high trees right <coughs> around the complete site. And then there's nothing in there about a warranty of the trees for a year, the maintenance program they're gonna have on these trees. What, you know, I mean, are these trees, they're gonna be green from the bottom up or are they gonna go up six feet when they grow up and they're gonna be no limbs or no greenery on the bottom? The, the size of this fence in the perimeter, what's that, an eight-foot fence? Mm -hmm. So, John, you've thrown out a lot of points, and some of them are very valid. However, we have to craft a new solar bylaw, like you were indicating when uh, we're talking to our, to our planner. I'll tell you, Joe, but what, if we, what happened there got the best of me. But and no. I ruined the town forever. But what, what we have to be aware of is that we cannot make up the rules as we go along. We have to have a new zoning bylaw. And the new zoning bylaw has, is, the state is pretty clear. We can regulate, but we cannot prohibit. The state is dictating what we can well, do. Right. So we don't have a lot of control, a lot of authority. You may think we do, but the attorney general has to approve our bylaw. And if we say, no, only to farmers, not to businesses, that will be thrown out. So we have to be careful how we craft our new zoning bylaw. So it's going to become more complicated, I think, than, yes, I like this project. No, I don't like that project. So regulate, let's regulate. Let's put a, a Well, I think we have to make a stand here. A and, screen and uh, right around there, the whole entire there's site. A, there's a higher, a there's a higher zoning bylaw than, than Hadley's, believe me. And we have to make a stand. Well, it, it fundamentally breaks down to we can regulate, but we cannot prohibit. 
We're not prohibiting. Tell them to find a good spot in Hadley to put this. This is not the appropriate <laughs> spot. Put her, find another spot. You guys got the money to buy another. another. I'm so, sure you could put a bigger field in some place. Could this. you point me to the section in the bylaw where it says this is not a good spot? I don't think it's Could properly screened. Me to I don't think it, I, I think as a matter of fact, unfortunately, it's impossible to properly screen Could this. Could you point in your open a, your eyes? That's, and that's why it's a bad investment. If they had looked at the bylaw, they would have realized that it's impossible to properly screen this, given the area of town it's in. That's my, my that's my point. It's impossible to screen well, it. They should have known that. If, if you guys like, had done your due diligence when you bought it, you'd know that. If he likes it so much, how would he like it if they did this right now? That's not the that's out? not the point. Would he like it? The, How do you like to look at Atkins Solar Ray? Is it attractive to you? That's in Amherst. Well, it's, Amherst is coming into this town, in yep. case you don't know. So, uh, on the basis of the bylaw, I just don't see any reason to discriminate against a corporate owner versus a Farmer owner. Again, it, exactly. You, you can't, but it's your interpretation of the bylaw, Bill. I agree with you completely on that. It's not not the fact that EverSource is a corporation. It's just the fact that the fact that they cannot comply with the bylaw on this particular parcel. So it's a discussion about what is quote unquote adequate screening. And I, what I'm hearing you say is there is no adequate screening. That's, that's correct. Oh. Not for this particular parcel. If they could bury it underground, then it might be adequate screening. To me, there's adequate screening when they screen right around the <clears throat> Then they got my vote. There. That's reasonable. So are you voting yes or no, Mr. Mishkowski? Yeah, I want to hear from them. Will they screen it right around? Eight foot screen. Guarantee the trees for a year and maintain it. Are you talking around the array or right, right around the perimeter of it. So nobody can see it from no no way. They can't see it from this way. They can't see it from that way, this way, or down this way. Come back, go right around, follow the whole array of right around. That's all, okay, that's all happening. Yeah, and this is only one of the areas. Sorry, yeah, that, so that's cool. not green. That You can see through. It through. lets our other property, the other property, Look, our 30 acres. It's not for you to tell me. I'm telling you what I want to see done there. And if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. That's how simple this is. Right. You're screening from somebody. That's our property. I guess that's, that's all I'm saying is to the east is all our property. That's all I'm How can you stop someone from looking through the open space? Because you own the property, you can't stop somebody from seeing through that. The only person who could speak to that was Mr. Earl because he's at a higher topography. That's why we met with him and he looked That's because his got a higher pro. Uh, he has the most I'm not talking about that. Around. That agreement he made, he is satisfied, that's fine. That's fine with me. But over here to the north, they still can look straight down here and see the solar array. And I don't know, on this road here, when he lose the fo foliage on the trees, because they're, they're not green trees, they're just they're trees with leaves on. This is the wetlands. Um, under the local um, wetlands bylaw, we uh, have to have a 35 foot no disturbed buffer. Um, that goes the same for your fence. I, I really think you just picked a bad place to think you could put a solar field in. You didn't uh, see, see what the potential problems were here. So basically, the fence is outside of that. some of the plantings, for example, down here in order to extend that. Um, that was a variance uh, that we had to go for, for uh, 
the Conservation Commission to be able to plan. I don't see why you cannot, if you can put the fence in a, in a 35 foot setback, you can plant trees in that same setback and put the fence in the fence. In the direction the fence is not in the 35 foot setback. What is it in? It's, it's, outside. Outside. it's about 40 feet. About 40 feet? Then plant the trees right next to it. And then you're still within 35 feet of the wetlands. You do that, you agree to maintain it, you put eight foot trees right around it, then my vote is yes. We did go back and add screening and approval from the cons from your original request. I don't care where you're gonna go to do it. Wherever you're gonna go. That's the stipulation. Yeah, here's the uh, here's the thirty five foot setback right in here. You don't have to go all that way. You, your soul already stopped short. You cut that whole leg off and come back and then follow the fence. That provides a visual screen from the north. That, that row of trees. It doesn't like cut, that. no, because if you look here. I'm seeing it from um, Lee Ridge Road and Street to the north. Past the brook to the northeast, you can see this whole soul array. When you pass Kellogg's house right here. You look due south, well, it would be south, in a southerly direction, you can see the so, whole solar array here. This, with the way you got that, will stop it at the junction of Moody Bridge, um, South Maple. And then if you look straight in a line like that, you'd see the tip of that other leg off Moody Bridge Junction the way the crow flies, straight in, right like this. So if something stops at that, they're gonna, they're gonna be able to see the, the far corner from this intersection. Look at Jim, right here. Yeah, see what you're saying. From here to here. Okay, so from what I understand, you get to build the from everybody. You would vote yes if we agreed to put that into the, the permit as a condition that we would plant all along that northeast side. And encompass the solar facility 360 degree and plant. John, can you can you show us exactly where you want where you're, where you're saying you want the trees? Follow the fence. Very simple. So you're talking that tip. Cut that way back down to to the fence. Come down here. Right there's the fence. Stop Cut that. Across there and then go right around and. So you're talking going across and around. No, you, they can't cross that, can they? No, this is all so you're talking just can going they cross that? No, that's why so you can go around. So you're talking fence. following this loop right. all the way around. Yep. Like this. Right. Not a triple row, single row. Probably six feet on center because they'll fill right in. So stop, get rid of this. Right. And then just follow the fence line. Exactly. Like that. Then no one's gonna complain they can't see it from the road or what. And if they fly over with a helicopter, that's too bad, that's their problem. And you know, an eight foot tree and to maintain it and guarantee it for one year. Eight eight foot? Because everything else is six foot. Huh? Are there how there? how high are the solar panels? They're about seven feet. Seven feet. That's the, to the that's from the same. ground from the road, looking straight out the road to the top of those, uh, the solar panels. They're gonna have a cut somewhere someplace. What's the, what's the height? In the, uh, in the plan set, I think you're looking. From the, from the they elevation got, they, they of the They gotta have a plan somewhere, you're gonna look it up. They gotta have, they gotta have that view somewhere. It should be toward the back. What is it? Eight. Right here. Eight feet? She's just the height of the fence. What is that? that that's going to be the... But what's the elevation from looking out, out, out at the road? From the road. Well, that, is that, the elevation of that road higher here, than that field? It's got to be. Oh. It's fairly close. Uh, you see my point. 
this is a place where they cannot fulfill the requirements of the bylaw as you see it. That's the height of the back of the panel. Eight feet. Eight feet. Eight feet. Okay. So the road is about 10 to 12 inches higher. What is the, you see the elevation of the road and the, and the field. He just told you. The he just said the road's about a foot higher. The crown of the road the is 10 or 12 inches. The, the road's about a foot higher than the field. But for sure, if there are eight foot trees here going by here, they're not going to see that. You're, not gonna, you're in a car. So if they're eight foot and you're a foot higher, that's seven foot. If you're a foot up here, then this only makes it seven foot across. So you just to be one forty seven. One forty seven. One forty eight. It's anywhere from a foot to level to maybe a foot and a half. Yeah, but I mean, driving by here, you're, you're going to be sitting in a car or a truck. You're not going to be sitting eight feet up on the ground, right? Right, yeah. So I think the tree would, would hide all that. Okay. <coughs> John Earl's all taken care of on that end. That's no problem with that. But want to go back to the, the that that's the one we're just looking at with all the where the, the soil shows us the, the soil the field with the uh, wetlands. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that one right there, right. Yeah. Is that a condition you want to agree to, or do you want to go back and review it if you want and come back to us? Okay. So we will take no vote, and we'll continue this hearing until. Well. You want to? Could you? You want to be back here in two weeks or six weeks? Uh, I tell you uh, one thing. I want to tell you. You can come back in two weeks, a week, a month. I'm not changing my mind. I'm not asking to change the mind. They're looking. They're looking to go back and see if they can agree to that. That's all. We also have to approve the conservation commission. So they did agree to it. And other portions. So. So is that six twenty? Uh. I think so. 620. Yep. Okay. So two weeks of time, 620. So you want to continue the hearing, this meeting, till 620? Okay. Two weeks. Okay. Continue to that. Thank you. All right. Next one is the Shady Lawn Estates. For definitive subdivision approval, <coughs> and we were looking for a few conditions of the. Uh, okay, I I am not participating in this one, but I will uh, take notes. Okay. So you wanted a letter from the fire chief. Which we got that. He should have given you, and I just gave you a copy of. Yes. You wanted. What, Joe does, wanted the, what does the fire chief say? Fire no chief, the, the fire chief says I have a planning board dated May 9th. I review, reviewed the sub reviewed 
the submitted plan for site plan <laughs> approval dated October 17, 2016 of the proposed Shady Lawn Estates definitive subdivision plan. I have reviewed the site, roadway dimensions, turnaround, and location of hydrants in relation to the proposed subdivision and find that the plan as proposed is acceptable to the fire department. Signed, Michael Spankenable. Thank you. Okay, that was item number one. <clears throat> item number two, Joe wanted to see a driveway cross section and drainage. So what, I've got a, a driveway cross section, 12 inches of compacted gravel minimum. Uh, this is only are going to be serve one house. It doesn't need to be 18 inches. And the road, it, I have it pitched to the north, and on the side of it will be stone-filled swale, which we've used in the past for projects similar to this. So the, it's basically a leach, leach field for the water to run off the roadway and into that. And then you oh, want- The covering. The covering. Uh, so you got- Compacted gravel, what kind of covering? Oh, okay. Bituminous uh, concrete? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got an inch and a half binder and an inch and a half finish. Oh, okay. Okay. Binder, inch and a half, and finish, inch and a half. Okay. Okay. Which way is this whole road pitched, Randy? Toward Down the north. To the street? No. no. Toward the north. Towards Kosher. Towards, towards Kosher. That way. The whole road is not pitched back no, this it, way. This is, it's going to be pitched back this way and then over this way, so it, the drainage ends up in this black, heavy black line right here. Yeah. That's the drainage swale I'm talking about, which is this stone lined, mm -hmm. fabric wrapped. Yeah. And, uh, and that's going to run from this point to that point? Yes. How far away from the road is that? A foot. Of, no, from the main road. There, there will be absolutely no spillover of water this, going on the road. The, wa the, the road has to come, you, you drain it from Middle Street, it's got to come down so that it does not drain onto Middle Street. We cannot put any water into the town roadway. Right. So there'll be a backward pitch till we get to here. And then this will so that, that, that water, water that water from from this apron is going to head that way. Yeah. Um, that that Jimmy you want you wanted to a note on the parcel that Kosher was going to get that said it cannot be further subdivided. I put that on there. Mm -hmm. And then there is a note somewhere up here in the upper right hand corner that stipulates that this is going to be. The house shall be single family owner occupied only with no accessory apartment allowed. Home office shall be allowed. Home business shall not be allowed. That was fine, right. I, and I went through the bylaw to make sure that I understood that home office is just me and my family, and home business is I can bring in employees, and I know you didn't want the ability to, to bring in employees. so. Okay. That should cover that concern. And I believe that was everything. Okay. So just for the audience and for the new people on the board, uh, we do have wiggle room with subdivision regulations. And unlike the bylaws that are sometimes very rigid and dictate to us what we can or cannot do, uh, section, what, it's, 81R in the state statute, but in Appendix D in our subdivision regulations, it does give us the ability to to change the the dimensions of the road, the width. But uh, Randy has come up with something pretty close to our subdivision road regulations, so it's not just going to be some gravel thrown on top of the grass. So that was my concern, and uh, we couldn't prevent it because once the Zoning Board of Appeals did, did allow that house to be built there, uh, it qualified for a subdivision. So our hands were tied once the ZBA made that decision. So the question we boil down to is do we put a full subdivision road with a cul-de-sac, which I feel would be not prudent but only a punishment 
for something which we had no control over. So that's why I am in favor of what Randy has presented before us. That was eloquent, Dr. Zagrodnik. Other comments from anybody? Questions? Hey, any questions or comments? No, I don't no. know what the hell he said. <laughs> <laughs> he said Joe did a good job. Okay, that's good. <laughs> All right, ready for a motion. <laughs> Are you ready for a motion? Shoot it. All right. You can put that in the middle. Ah, uh, <laughs> let's see. The pro let's see. Motion to approve the definitive subdivision. Uh, the project satisfies the real purpose of Mass General Laws, Chapter 41, Section such and such, subdivision control law, and complies with the Town of Hadley subdivision regulations, except as waived herein. The layout detail um, called Shady Lawn Estates, revised. By 15, 17. Um, because of the small scale of the subdivision, the planning board determined that it is in a public interest and not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the subdivision control law to waive strict compliance with the Hadley subdivision regulations to the extent necessary to allow construction as shown on the reference plans as provided in Mass General Laws, Chapter 41, Section 81R, the following waivers are approved. No street lights, no sidewalks, right of way reduced to 30 feet, pavement of way reduced to 16 feet. That didn't change, right, Randy? The pavement did not change. Okay. And the right of way did not change. Okay. Uh, the planning board placed the following conditions that this parcel A conveyed uh, is to be closure to parcel A to be conveyed to Mr. Kosher is not to be further subdivided, so noted on the plan. No more than one dwelling unit may be constructed on each lot, and no lot hereby approved shall be further subdivided for the purpose of constructing additional dwellings. The, con the property, the building shall be owner-occupied. Um, I think that says owner-occupied. Single family dwelling. I'm going to read some of Mr. Dwyer's notes here. <laughs> I thought I wrote that. And no accessory apartment nor um, a home business is permitted, but I mean a home office. Home office is permitted, home, home business is not. Is that the way it's worded? Yes, okay. Um, the layout of ways and the municipal services provided to this subdivision have been designated for one lot only and approval accordingly is limited to that number of lots as shown on the submitted plans. It is understood that they agreed and agree that the roadway has been designated and will be constructed in a manner which will render it unacceptable to the town of Hadley as a town way. And the roadway will not be presented to town meeting for acceptance. The town of Hadley will have no obligation for maintenance of the way, all infrastructure, paving, grading, snow, ice removal, care of drainage structures and or of the utility shall be the responsibility of the developer and or neighborhood association created for that purpose. The applicant will cause a sign to be posted at the intersection of the subdivision way and the adjacent public way identifying the subdivision way as a private way. This approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required including but not limited to have the conservation have a sewer commission, have the water commissioners, board of selectmen, state agencies, including the Mass Environmental Policy Unit Act. Um, any change, any project change is directed by other boards or agencies must be approved by the planning board. Depending upon the nature of the changes required by others, it may be necessary, become necessary to reopen the public hearing. The subdivision approval shall not become effective until a notice of decision is rendered reference to the original subdivision plans and separately recorded in the Hampshire Registry of Deeds and the applicant and engineer certify the conditions set forth are noted. Copies and original are signed by the planning board, the building inspector, zoning enforcement, or the town clerk. And that is the motion. Second. Do we I'll have sec a second? I'll second the motion. Mike can raise second. Is there anything to do with the aquifer recharge or no, because it must comply with the aquifer recharge, but there's no special permit required because of the residents. But you've got to comply with the size of the lot, which he does. Yeah, I know I'm going to make a note on 
on the roadway that it is private. I haven't done that yet. And then also, I believe we talked about the address being a middle street address, not, and I don't know if that's anything you guys need to be concerned with. No, that's with. Tim. That, that we, we mentioned, we noted that on a lot of our very small sub, I mean, yes, I don't think we particularly need to note that on this. That's really a Tim, okay. Tim zoning thing, I'm mean, not a zoning thing, a building inspector and a fire yeah. police thing so that they know, I understand the concern because if you've got this single street in the middle of nowhere and you hear in a plant, you, you read about it and the poor fire department or the ambulance. You're gonna have a number for you know yeah. Right, and they go, they go look, I mean, it's got a valid number of, let's say, 10 um, shady lawn and where the heck is 10 shady lawn and if it's you know a number coinciding with it with middle street it makes much more sense from a emergency response point of view we don't have a problem with that because it makes sense for that reason you have okay. to change the number in front what's what's the number of this one 132 it might be 132a 132b well, I think no? there's an opening. I think yeah as long as there's an opening you just got, if not you're going to do some renumbering of the house that it's going to pay for like you've done sure right okay we have a motion and a second. All in favor, any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes, you passes four, zero with one abstention. Thank you, gentlemen. I think we're gonna put a solar farm on this. Next. Good idea. Why didn't you tell me that before you started? You would have seen the different ball game. I saw enough different ball game. You've seen enough? How many, do you want any of these now, Jimmy? Um, one because that's what we maybe want. one. Uh, Just one. The assessors will want one, won't they? They'll want it once we get it. They want it once you get everything done on it. The appeal period we've got to wait for and all that. So once Tom Close tells me that it's clear, I'll get her to sign it and I'll bring it back. Or Motion to approve the minutes, Jim. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of stuff to approve here. You're going to type yourself tonight, Yeah. Okay. I'll still certify that that was the vote that was taken. Okay. We have minutes to approve. We'll go for that one first. So, uh, do you have the <coughs> EverSource file? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to shove this in. Okay, we have the Eversource file. That's Eversource. Okay, you got those. Okay, we have minutes to approve. I didn't print them out because I didn't get my computer today. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 7th, April 4th, and May 2nd, 2017. Okay. Motion a second. There's, All in there's favor? One, one typo on the, on the uh, March 7th one. Test pits have been dog. It just should have been dug. I like dog myself. Dog dig. So that there should have been five. Were there four or five? March I just had three. Were there not? Were there others printed on March twenty-one? I must have missed those. Which one was that? March seventh, April fourth. March twenty-one, right? March second. Oh, I didn't see them all. Well, March okay. Well, I withdraw the motion, and you make a motion to approve them all. So four, 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 four. What's the next one? I like that one. You figured it, figured the dates out. <laughs> four eighteen and five five two five two five two. Yeah, four 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 eighteen three seven and three twenty one. Correct. Okay. Up to May second. Yeah. So there are okay. five of them. Motion. Michikowski, second Sarzinski. Yes. All in favor? Any discussion? Aye. All in favor? Except Aye. For the, Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, we also have, let's see, um, payroll. Payroll, where do I put it? Where do I put it? I made one out. Sure, that's not it. No, because I filled one. I filled one out. Oh, okay. Oh, here it is. 
Motion to approve payroll for our second quarter from April to June 2017. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. It'd be best that goes directly to the accountant's mail slot. Oh, accountant, not the treasurer? Not the treasurer. Okay. And then we have uh, an invoice to the Daily Hampshire Gazette for legal notices uh, totaling $389.48 for um, tap room, large scale solar. Okay. Tap room and large scale solar, two different legal ads. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Then we have, after the next quarter, we have, this is the one we talked about um, for a reserve fund transfer so that we could actually buy a scanner which would be used, shared and used by the planning board, the building inspector, highway department, anybody else that would need an access to a scanner. So we could scan our drawings in and they could scan their drawings in, et cetera. And it is for $7,600 to buy a, a scanner. So and is it coming out of our budget or is no, it? No, it's coming, it's, it's, they're, they're taking a reserve fund transfer and moving it into the planning board so it could be paid out of the planning board budget. So this is an addition to our budget for this fiscal year. And they've asked that we sign this. So do we have the support of the building inspector and the highway department? The building inspector is tickled that we're getting this. Well, I asked him about this. Maybe we ought, should ask half of it to come out of his budget. It's not coming out of his budget. It's coming out of the town budget. I know. I'm Nobody's budget. Yeah. What do you want to do? Shortchange him? Yes. He yeah. want to, he tried, they try to be a, he's trying to be funny over there. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so I... We need a motion for the planning board to have the chairman sign this. So moved. Second. All in favor? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Department requesting transfer. How big will it scan, Jim? Uh, we'll scan an east size sheet, which is, I forget the exact name, but it's the biggest, biggest standard drawing that we have in our file. Perfect. And it's a color scanner. How, how many years are those things good for you? Depends how much you use them or what? Um, because all it is is a light bulb, you replace the light bulb, has to be, it's like anything, it's a light bulb, it's an LED, it's an LED scanner. So I'm assuming that after some period of time the light bulb burns out, but there's no printing involved, there's nothing but a electronic reading that's done by the light bulb. So once, as long as the light bulb is working, this thing should be good for years and years and years is because this it doesn't sheet, print. Sheet fed or flat? Or what do you mean, sheet fed or? I mean, <clears throat> if we take a ten-page plan, we take the staples out. Will you, it draw it through time. one at a time? Okay, so you have it's to lift the it's lid. A, it's and a, it's a, you, you feed them in. Okay. one at a time. So it's got to do a single. It's it's scanned. Okay, it'll scan single page at a time, but it could be in theory an endless. As long as it's within the width of the of the unit the drawing could be 10 feet long okay it's just a matter of which what's your computer's going to see can, when you can i mean can you stack those on like you do a regular copy and they feed in by the that's what i meant by sheet i fed. don't i don't well i don't think so i think they've always got to be fed in manually one at a time um the one any scan but when you scan it, what's that put it on? Electronic. It'll, 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 it'll scan it to a computer, no. No. and typically it scans it to what so they call a PDF. Printing. So if you go to Adobe Acrobat on your computer, anybody with Adobe Acrobat, which is a free download, can read these drawings. It'll scan, I think, up to four different or five different major types, but the most common one is PDF, and the one that I'm, rec that I'm looking at PDF is one of the multiples that'll do. And if you have, let's say, uh, um, an AutoCAD, 
you could actually scan this directly into AutoCAD because the computer and the scanner would talk back and forth. Uh, can you read it on an iPad? Yes. You can? Yes. I've been having trouble. Maybe my iPad can. Well, don't forget, some of these drawings are huge in memory. Yeah. They, they've got a lot of big megabytes. Some of them are not uncommon to have 15, 20 megabytes, depending on the detail. Yeah. And sometimes that just overloads the iPad. But I've, scan I've read drawings on my iPhone, right. okay? Um, simple ones, maps. Um, so the one thing that any kind of scanner that you feed stuff in on, <coughs> is that the, uh, the whatever, the wheels that are grabbing it eventually wear out. Right. So that would be the other consumable, but they're, they're minor items. Yeah, those, those are the, the biggest one is the, the, the main guts of the scanner or the main brain of the scanner is not something that typically wears out. The light bulb, um, one of the things I did find out is that the LED, they make the LED ones now, which last a lot longer than the old fluorescent lights or halogen lights. So are we getting a computer and a hard drive to, as part of this? That's what I'm looking at right now because it was the, the $7,600 was more than enough to cover the scanner, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough to cover a, um, okay. a computer. Um, it would probably cover a hard drive if we attached it to a computer because those things aren't expensive. Yep. Um, but I think 7600 is, depending on the price of the scanner, um, it might be cutting it close to get a computer. Yeah, there may be, may be something surplus at Town Hall or at the school that yeah. we could. Well, the other thing, if we get, the, I have no problem connecting one of my laptops to it for now. Mm -hmm. And next year in our budget, we try to get a laptop of, you know, a good laptop cost you 500 bucks. Yep. At least we get, we got the, this is the, you know, this one, this is a huge, I mean, I'm sure we could even use the, uh, uh, actually, I think this thing scans to a, uh, what you call it? USB. My, 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 this, my, this scan, my, my scan to a USB. Okay. Some of them do. Okay. Okay. We'll figure that out. Um, I believe that's all I have. Uh, let's see, oh, uh, discussion topics, I think that actually has been addressed, uh, the viewscape protection. We already talked to That's Larry That's really about what we blended into what Larry's going to be looking at That was about us. what we said about the solar array of viewscapes and everything else yeah. as far as getting into the master plan, so Larry's going to look at some information on and us. It was supposed to be on the agenda to waive the site plan uh, peer review for the fire station. And I forgot to put that on. And the reason reason I asked that, because the same guy that does the peer review for us, Birchard Design, is designing the system. And I have talked to him. I says, you know, do you have a problem? He says, and I says, you know, because you do peer review and because you work with the board all the time, I can't see you putting something together for a town project that's not going to work. And I had estimates between three and $5,000. We're, we're right now $800,000 short with everything that has to go in that project. So wherever we can save some money, it's just, that's what I'm trying to do. So there are two things they can do. One, I can just put it on the next agenda. Or two, we can just take it up when when the application is filed. You'd rather know in advance, probably. You're right. Okay. I, I just, you know, I want to get everything done that needs to be done so when it comes into to the planning board, everything is clean, there's no delays and everything else we can move forward. Okay. I, so will, I will try to remember to put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Okay. You can remind me. I have nothing. I have nothing else. That's it. Motion to adjourn. Journey at six forty-five. Second. Six forty-five. Nine twenty-one. Nine twenty. That's what that says. Motion yeah. to adjourn. We have a second. We've been in a time. Warp. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, TV Five.